generator, and even a helicopter that ran on radio frequencies. A true free energy device that keeps batteries consistently charged. It took me several months to find him, but when I did, it blew my mind. What if I told you there's an African inventor who created a car that never needs charging, runs forever on radio waves, and could change everything we know about energy? His name is Maxwell Chikambutso, and while Elon Musk is selling millions of Teslas that need lithium mines and massive charging stations, this self-taught genius from Zimbabwe claims he's figured out how to pull unlimited power straight from the air around us. The technology sounds impossible, presidents are taking notice, and the implications could shake the entire electric vehicle industry to its core. Stick with me because by the end of this video, you'll understand why this African inventor might be holding the key to something Musk's billions couldn't buy, and why the world is finally starting to pay attention. Here's what I want you to walk away with today. You're going to learn exactly how Maxwell Chikambutso's radio frequency technology works, why it's completely different from anything Tesla is doing, and what this could mean for the future of transportation and energy. This isn't just about two inventors or two types of cars. This is about a fundamental shift in how we think about powering our world. And if you stick around until the end, I'll show you why this technology has the potential to make everything we know about batteries and charging completely obsolete. Let me take you back to 2009. Maxwell Chikambutso was a high school dropout living in Zimbabwe, watching hospitals struggle because they couldn't keep medicine refrigerated. Power outages lasted 15 hours a day. People suffered because the electricity grid was failing. But instead of accepting this as normal, Chikumbutso started experimenting. He had a dream, literally a dreamlike inspiration, about working with airwaves. He realized something incredible. The air around us is filled with invisible energy in the form of radio frequencies. These waves are everywhere, bouncing off buildings, traveling through walls, carrying signals for phones and radios. They're measured in nanovolts, which means they're incredibly weak, almost nothing. But Chikambutso asked himself a question nobody else was asking. What if we could harvest these radio frequencies and convert them into usable electricity? He spent years developing what he calls the microsonic energy device. This isn't just another battery battery or solar panel. According to Chikambutso, his device captures naturally occurring radio frequencies from the environment and transforms them into pure, continuous energy. He created 70% of the components himself, custom-made pieces that enable radio frequencies to be transferred into useful power. The result? A technology that works anywhere on Earth or at sea, day or night, rain or shine, without needing sunlight like solar panels or recharging like Tesla's batteries. In 2015, he demonstrated his first electric car powered entirely by this technology. No charging ports, no waiting around at charging station, no range anxiety wondering if you'll make it to your destination. Just continuous power pulled from the invisible energy field surrounding us at all times. Fast forward to January 2025. Zimbabwe's President Emerson Nangagwa invited Chikumbutso to State House in Harare. Cameras rolled as Chikambutso demonstrated his latest invention, a vehicle called the Safe. The car runs on radio frequencies instead of lithium batteries. But here's the kicker. The Safe isn't just a car. It's a mobile power generator. You can drive it to your house and use it to power your entire home. Chikumbutso explained to the president how the microsonic energy device works, how it harnesses radio frequencies that are measured in nanovolts and converts them into energy powerful enough to move a vehicle and run household appliances. President Menangawa called it a world first. He praised Chikumbutso's ingenuity and emphasized the need to support homegrown talent. The government is now exploring building a vehicle manufacturing plant in Zimbabwe specifically for this technology. If that happens, Zimbabwe could become a global hub for next-generation energy solutions. Now, let me tell you what makes this technology revolutionary. Chikambutso also built a television that works without being plugged in. The TV has no power cables. Instead, it's embedded with his microsonic energy device that pulls power from radio frequencies. That same TV can produce 500 watts with 15 amps, which means it could also power two 100-watt light bulbs to illuminate an entire house. 
He's working on miniaturizing the technology so it can be integrated into cell phones, computers, laptops, and decoders. Imagine a world where your phone never needs charging, where your laptop runs indefinitely without plugging it in, where every electronic device is self-powered just by existing in the environment. The implications go far beyond personal gadgets. Chicken Butso's company, Safe Technologies, has developed what they call the Greener Power Machine, or GPM. This is an electric system that runs continuously without being plugged plugged into anything. It uses ambient energy that's present around the clock in space naturally. The technology was examined and validated by Foster Gamble, creator of the documentary Thrive, along with electrical engineer and scientist Nils Ragnarud. They traveled to Zimbabwe in 2018 and spent two weeks testing a 500-kilowatt GPM generator. After days of technical examination, they validated the functionality. This validation was documented in the 2020 documentary Thrive 2. The device draws energy from what Chikam Butso describes as sonic pressure waves in the ether of space, background energy that's always present from astronomical bodies like the sun, earth, and moon. Some people call these longitudinal waves, scalar waves, or Tesla waves. Whatever you call them, the point is this energy is constantly replenished, similar to how lightning in our skies is always replenished. The device doesn't consume any materials and doesn't need to be recharged. But here's where things get interesting in terms of the comparison with Elon Musk and Tesla. An Angolan businessman named Louis Cupanala, chairman of Bangani Group, invested millions in Chikumbuzo's safe technologies. This investment enabled the manufacturing of the first prototypes using this groundbreaking technology. The result was the first first electric vehicle in the world that converts radio frequencies into energy, making it the first car with perpetual motion and zero emissions because it has no recharging system. Compare that to Tesla. Elon Musk's cars depend entirely on lithium-ion batteries. These batteries store electricity that you charge from the grid or solar panels. A Tesla Model 3 holds an 80 kilowatt hour lithium-ion battery. To manufacture that single battery, carbon dioxide emissions range between 2.4 metric tons and 16 metric tons. That's as much as a gas-powered car emits driving 2,500 miles, and that's just for manufacturing the battery before the car even hits the road. Now let's talk about what it takes to get that lithium. Lithium mining requires a massive amount of water. Approximately 500,000 gallons of water are used for every ton of lithium mined. In Chile, lithium mining consumes 65% of the region's water. This is happening in some of the driest places on Earth, in Argentina, Bolivia, and Chile, known as the Lithium Triangle. These areas are already water scarce, and lithium mining makes it worse. Miners drill holes in salt flats and pump salty, mineral-rich brine to the surface. The water evaporates over several months, leaving lithium and other minerals behind. But this process can leak chemicals into the water supply, contaminating the environment. It causes water, air, and soil pollution. The United Nations declared that having a clean, healthy, and sustainable environment is a human right. Lithium mining violates that right. And it's not just lithium. Tesla batteries also need cobalt and nickel. Much of the cobalt comes from the Democratic Republic of Congo, where mining heavily uses child labor. Many miners work without protective equipment in unsafe conditions. They earn low wages that place them well below the poverty line. The contamination from cobalt mining has resulted in birth defects and breathing problems for people in surrounding communities. All of this happens so Tesla can build batteries that last 10 to 20 years before they need Need to be replaced. Then those batteries have to be recycled, which is energy intensive, or they end up as waste. Experts project 11 million tons of lithium ion batteries will be discarded between 2017 and 2030. Transporting these batteries from Australia to Europe for recycling increases global warming potential by 45%. Maxwell Chikambuzo's technology bypasses all of this. No lithium mining, no cobalt extraction, no child labor, no water pollution. No massive carbon footprint from manufacturing batteries. No recycling challenges. The microsonic energy device uses special metals and radio frequency electrical stimulation to extract and convert ambient background energy. According to the company's website, the device doesn't consume any materials. It's inert and safe, posing no radiation hazards. It's similar to a TV or normal radio receiver in terms of safety. The device works through what they describe as quantum tunneling effects from converted electron gas clouds of metamaterial alloys. No material is consumed in the energy conversion process. Now I know what some of you are thinking. If this technology is so amazing, why isn't everyone using it? Why isn't it everywhere already? 
Great question. Chikambutso faced serious obstacles. When he tried to file for patents in multiple countries, patent offices rejected him. They told him his invention violates the laws of physics and therefore isn't industry applicable. He couldn't get legal protection for his technology through the traditional patent system, so he took the trade secret route instead, keeping the exact mechanisms proprietary. But there's more to the story. Chikambutso claims he and his colleague were poisoned in the United States because their idea was deemed unconventional. His colleague died from the poisoning. Chikambutso himself has survived multiple attempts. He believes big energy companies and foreign powers want to stop him because his technology threatens their entire business model. Think about it. If free energy becomes widely available, what happens to oil companies? What happens to electric utility companies? What happens to the lithium mining industry? These are trillion-dollar industries that employ millions of people and control geopolitical power. The US dollar dominant position in the world economy is partly because of global demand for fossil fuels to power factories, homes, and transportation. Control of energy has defined geopolitics for over a century. Maxwell Chikambutso's invention poses a serious threat to that entire structure. It could render mineral extraction and fossil fuel use far less critical, because the sky itself becomes the source of unlimited power. This is where the comparison with Elon Musk becomes fascinating. Musk is worth over $200 billion. Tesla sold 1.8 million cars globally in 2024. The Model Y became the world's best-selling electric vehicle, moving over 1.2 million units. In the United States alone, Tesla holds nearly 50% of the entire electric vehicle market. Musk has the resources, the factories, the supply chains, and the political connections to dominate the EV industry. His technology works. Millions of people drive Teslas every day. The batteries charge, the motors turn, the cars move. It's proven, established technology. But here's the thing. Musk's technology still depends on extracting finite resources from the Earth, manufacturing them in energy-intensive processes, and eventually disposing of them as waste. It's better than gasoline cars in terms of direct emissions, but it's not truly free or infinite. Chikombutso's technology, if it works as claimed, changes the entire equation. Radio frequencies are everywhere, always replenishing, available to everyone. No one owns them. No company can monopolize them. No country can hoard them. They're just there, in the air, waiting to be harvested. That's why some people draw parallels between Maxwell Chikambutso and Nikola Tesla, the legendary inventor. Tesla, the man not the car company, also claimed to tap into cosmic energy and believed in wireless transmission of power. He faced ridicule, financial struggles, and suppression of his ideas. His rivalry with Thomas Edison and lack of funding prevented many of his greatest inventions from becoming mainstream. Maxwell Chikambutso faces similar battles today. The question many are asking is this. Would Chikambutso be treated differently if he were Elon Musk? Would he have billions in funding, factories around the world, and mainstream acceptance? Or is the world not ready to accept an African pioneering disruptive technology? Economic survival mode keeps many African nations focused on short-term needs rather than investing in long-term innovation. African elites often chase Western approval funding Western brands rather than homegrown talent. Government corruption and lack of industrial infrastructure mean that even breakthrough technology struggles to reach mass production. But that might be changing. One investor saw something in Maxwell Chikambutso and put millions behind him. President Misnangagwa publicly endorsed the technology and called for building manufacturing plants in Zimbabwe. The technology was validated by independent engineers and documented in a major documentary. People around the world are starting to pay attention. If Chikambutso's technology gets the support it needs, if manufacturing scales up, if the world embraces this innovation, we could be looking at an energy revolution. Imagine cars that never need charging, homes powered without electric bills, phones and laptops that run indefinitely, developing countries leapfrogging the entire fossil fuel and battery infrastructure, going straight to free energy harvested from the environment. No more geopolitical conflicts over oil. No more water scarcity from lithium mining. No more child labor in cobalt mines. Just clean, abundant, democratized energy available to everyone everywhere. The official launch of Chikambutso's free energy vehicle happened on February 10, 2025 in Zimbabwe. Scientists, engineers, and investors from around the world watched closely. 
The big question is whether the technology delivers as promised and whether it can be scaled for mass production. Will established industries and energy corporations embrace this shift or resist it? Will powerful stakeholders who benefit from the current system allow this technology to flourish? Or will Maxwell Chickenbutso face the same fate as other inventors who tried to disrupt the energy industry? What makes this story so compelling is that it's not just about invention. It's about belief, about who gets to shape the future, about whether transformative technology can come from unexpected places. Maxwell Chikombuzo is a self-taught engineer who dropped out of school at 14. He didn't have Ivy League credentials, venture capital funding, or connections to Silicon Valley. He had a dream, a vision of a better future, and the determination to build something the world said was impossible. Whether his technology ultimately succeeds on a global scale or not, he's already shifted the conversation. He's made people question assumptions about energy, about what's possible, about who gets to innovate. So here's what I want you to take away from all this. Elon Musk built an empire on proven technology that works today, but still relies on extracting and processing finite resources. Maxwell Chikambuzo is pioneering a vision of infinite, freely available energy harvested from the environment itself. One approach is practical, established, and profitable. The other is revolutionary, controversial, and potentially world-changing. Both inventors are pushing the boundaries of what's possible with electric transportation and sustainable energy. The question isn't really who's better or whose technology wins. The question is whether we're ready for a fundamental transformation in how we power our civilization, and whether we'll support the innovators brave enough to challenge everything we thought we knew. If this video opened your eyes to something new, hit that subscribe button because there's so much more to explore about innovations changing our world.